Hello everyone, it's Imani C with MilesLogo.com and today I am back with another tutorial of how to get started with Snapchat's on-demand geofilters. Now if you're on Snapchat, I'd love to connect with you and you'll see my snap code pop up right here. You can go ahead and screenshot it. But enough about me, I want to go ahead and get started with this. If you're watching this tutorial, thank you so much and I have something super special for you at the end so you're going to want to stay tuned. If you don't already have a design, you can go ahead and check out my tutorial here. For everyone else, let's go ahead and get started. So what you're going to do is come to snapchat.com slash on demand, and then you're just going to go ahead and click the create now. Now this will take us to a login page if we haven't already logged in, but I previously logged in, and so now it's just telling me, okay, now it's time to submit, go ahead and choose your file. Now you want to make sure that your file is a PNG and what this means is that it has a clear background on your file so that when you upload it to Snapchat nothing is blocking your friends or your audience from putting their selfie or their picture behind your design. We're going to go ahead and choose a file. Now once we have this file, we're just going to wait for it to upload and it's going to basically show us what it will look like in the app. Now you can zoom out, zoom in so it fits perfectly. Mine fits right about there. And normally when it loads in this photo, it will snap it to the exact size of where it thinks it'll cut off and everything for you. Now you just want to give your geo filter a name. Now if you're creating multiple geo filters or uploading geo filters that you know you're going to use more than once, you want to make sure you use a very specific name. So mine is just going to be Snapchat Geo Filter. Well, some logo sponsor. And then you go ahead and click next. Now it's going to give me the option to choose a date. And one thing to be very careful of is your time zone. The time zone will be automatically set to your computer's uh, time zone that's already loaded. So if you're traveling frequently and you may be switching time zones, you want to double check and make sure that this is correct for where your filter is going to be shown. If your filter is going to be shown on the East Coast and you're dealing with Central time, you're going to want to make sure you account for that. If you're on the West Coast and something is different, you have mountain time, that's just one thing you want to be very careful of. I'm going to go ahead and choose my date. And then it's also letting me choose my time. So I'm going to go from 2 p.m. to 3 p.m. That looks like a good time. I'm going to go ahead and click Next. And then it's going to give me a map and I can put in my area of where I want this filter to load. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to search Austin, Texas. And I want for this filter to show up. I'm going to zoom in on this map. And there's the capital. So if I have a special event going on and I know it's going to be in a very specific location, I can go ahead and set up exactly where I want this filter to show up. So you have the, uh, the capital right here, which is in downtown Austin. But if you had it at an event center, if you had it at um, different networking place, you would want your filter to show up there. So this is the Austin Convention Center, and I'm just going to go ahead and draw my filter fence around this area. So one thing that you also want to be careful of when you're drawing your fence is you want to include the street around your building. Because once your filter loads, it can be a little bit tricky and iffy where it shows up if you haven't created a buffer zone. So dealing with something as large as a convention center can be a little bit easier. And then you can just drag points out where maybe it went in slightly 
to make sure it shows up everywhere in your building. You want to include the street. That way, if you're in a certain corner or etc., a certain part of the building, you know that it will show up and it won't cut off. If I drew my filter exactly to this building and every point was around the edge, if I were in a certain part of this building, say like this foyer or entry area, my filter would not show up. So that's something you just want to be careful and aware of. So I'm going to go ahead and drag this back out. And as I'm dragging this, you can see up in this corner, it's giving me the size of the square footage that's being covered. So, it's, and it's also giving me the time. So if an event is happening for two hours, but I know that the main peak of that hour is this 2 p.m. to 3 p.m., I can set my filter for just that time. And then the price is going to adjust with the size and with my time. So if I increase the time that I'm going to run this filter, of course, my price increases. Now, once everything looks good, I'm just going to zoom out and double check. And then I also zoom in and double check that it didn't miss anything. If you have buildings with kind of unique configurations, you just want to double check and make sure every point you cover the street and the building. It looks pretty good. Then I'm just going to go ahead and click Next. Once this is done, it's just giving me an order summary that says, yes, you've approved this design, you've approved this location and space, and you've approved this time. Then I can just go ahead and specify what kind of filter type. And what this does is this allows them to just briefly display my filter and be able to have it double check it against their submission guidelines. So if you have an at name or you have an email address, they will not approve your design. And that's something you want to be very careful of. Then I just go ahead and enter my payment. And on the date that my I've specified, if I go to that location, my filter will run. So I'm going to do this all later. And I will go ahead and show you what this filter looks like right now. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. If you have any questions on how do I upload my Snapchat Geo filter or how do I get a community filter submitted, please leave them in the comments below. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe to this video. And as I promised in the beginning of this video, I do have a very special gift for everyone. Snapchat offers these templates for geo filters, but they are extremely ugly. So I decided to create some of my own that were really cool, interesting, and innovative. So if you go down to the description box of this video, you can go ahead and download those filters for free, those templates. You can edit them, you can change them, you can do whatever you like, but that's just my free gift to you. Hope you have a great day. See you next time.